Welcome to Redefining Balance for Working Moms podcast, where we believe life balance is possible. Uh, Yes, even for you. You might just have to redefine what it looks like for yourself. I'm your host, fellow working mom and founder of Your Life Rocks, Jenny Stemmerman. Each week, I'll bring you practical, real-life tips to help you focus on the things that matter most in life and be the best version of yourself in every area that God has called you to. Ready to redefine what balance looks like for you in your life? Let's go. Hey there, welcome to the show, and thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Today, we're kicking off a new series, and if I'm honest, I almost decided maybe to pause this series for a few weeks with everything that's going on in the world, but then I thought, you know what, maybe this is exactly what we all need, because we are starting a career series, and for some of us, when we are challenged to have to work from home, we are really kind of challenging ourselves and what we're doing and the companies that we work for. And in this series, we're going to talk about how to show up and be your best at where you're at, how to bloom where you're planted, or if you need to move on, what to do in those next steps. We're also going to be covering things like communication in the workforce how to be a leader, whether you have the title or not, and so much more. And I just really think that maybe, just maybe, this is exactly what we need right now to help us focus in on maybe with everything going on, you have been frustrated in your job, but your employer has been really, really awesome and flexible. And you've decided, you know what, I just have to make this work right where I'm at because it's kind of a blessing. Or maybe the opposite is true for you and you need to figure out what your next moves are. Either way, I hope that this series blesses you, and I hope that you decide to share it with a couple other working mom friends that maybe you have. Now, before we get started into this series, I just want to tell you that you have been on my mind. I've been praying for you. I know for a lot of us, our life is kind of turned upside down in a way that we might not even recognize. And with that comes a lot of emotions, and with that comes a lot of thinking, a lot of praying. At least I hope it does for you. It does for me, for sure. And I just want to encourage you that use this time to move closer to God. Like, I know that right now there's a ton of stuff out there, especially on Facebook, about how you can set up a schedule and do this and do that. And you should be doing all of this stuff with our kids and our house. And, you know, you you see people who are completely purging their entire house or making bread for the first time. All of that is great. But it can also put a lot of pressure on us and thinking, am I doing this right? Am I capturing the moment right? And I would just encourage you that let whatever be, be. Like pray and follow the Holy Spirit in what he would have you be doing with your time. And I know that seems like totally weird coming from me when I'm normally giving you all of these tips and inspirations and steps and what to do and how to do it. But truly, I don't think our world needs more of that right now. I think we need to get really clear on what our values are, what our intentions are, and work towards building a life that really matters and really reflects those things. And it's because of that that I feel like this is exactly why we talk about balance. This is exactly why I feel like we need to have this career series that we're going into because it is all about balance. Even though it's a career series, the things we're going to talk about might apply to the way that you are parenting or in your marriage or in your health or your finances or any of the other areas of life. And so I just pray that God would use this series for you and the way that he wants to. Now, today's episode, I am joined by a special guest, and she's going to guide us through three steps, things that we can do if we decide we just need to bloom right where God has us, right where we're planted. This is where we need to make the best of where we are. Now, you might be thinking that because you absolutely love where you are and you couldn't think of possibly going someplace else. Or maybe you've been looking and doors just have not been opening and you need to just switch your perspective, switch your attitude around to really make the best of where you are right where God has you. Now, my guest today's name is Dana Bickman, and she is a writer, speaker, artist, ordained minister, and a change maker. Now, one of the cool things about Dana is that she is a ghost writer, a little bit different than, you know, some a lot of other authors that we have on our show. And she partners with leaders, speakers, ministers, and business owners to craft their ideas and teachings into books. She is the founder of The Constant Creative, where she's been helping others get their voice and message out there for two years. Now, the thing I really love about Dana is how much scripture she brings into these three steps that she has for us in blooming where we're planted. 
God is truly using her in mighty ways, and I'm so excited for her to bless you today. So without further ado, let's get into my interview with Dana. Dana, welcome to Redefining Balance podcast. I'm so excited that you're here and helping us kick off our career series. But before we get into all of the beautiful wisdom that you have for us, share with us a little bit more about who you are. Well, thank you for having me. I am a wife of 26 years, a mom of two, a granny to a perfect little one named Andrew. I'm an ordained minister, a business owner. I founded a homeless art initiative called One Shoe Art. I love to paint, sing, write, and just encourage and teach people to tap into their creativity and purpose. I love it so much. And I love so much that you have really kind of built a career for yourself around creativity. Because, you know, oftentimes when we're thinking about our careers, we're thinking about how much we're going to make, what hours we want to work, what are our passions. But seldom do we really think about the creative. And obviously, some people are more naturally creative and they're more kind of drawn to those types of careers. And then there's others of us that maybe not so much. So talk to me a little bit about creativity. And is that really something that's for everybody or just for people that are naturally more creative? So I'm extremely passionate about this topic. I believe that we are made in the image of the master creator. And therefore, we must be creative beings. Even if you don't think, oh, I'm not an artistic person. I think for too long, we've let the arts hijack what we think creativity is. We need to let go of that 20th century thinking and really kind of tap into this idea that creativity is an expression of every part of our lives. It's simply just problem solving in an amazing creative way that is outside of the box. Creativity is not coming up with something brand new. It is marrying other ideas and resources to new ideas and resources and bridging that gap in a way that hasn't been done before. That's Uh, all creativity is. So everyone can be creative. I think that that's amazing. And the way that you talked about that, because what we're going to be talking about today on this show is really blooming right where you're planted. And I think that sometimes when we think about being creative with our careers, it's like creative on what else you could do in your career or where else you could go to or how you could kind of switch things around. But really, you can be creative right where you are without having to like really upset the norm of, you know, finding a new job or moving to a new company or, or whatever that is. Because God, I truly believe that God always has us right where we need to be. And it's not about settling or, you know, kind of tying yourself down, but it's really about using your creative skills to make it the best that it can be. Absolutely. So many times in our careers, um, I've been guilty of this. So I can definitely speak from my experience and then talking to other women over my 10, 15 years of writing and doing what I do. We tend to think, well, if I just had XYZ job, then I would be happy in that job. But the truth is, we serve a, a God that, that places us. He ordains our footsteps. And so if you're in a job, it may not be... You may have chosen poorly. You had an option between two jobs. You chose poorly. You're in a job where you think, oh, this is not the one I should have taken. But the truth is, is you're there and you're there for a reason. You're there for a purpose and you're there for a season. And part of that is the people that you work with. But more than anything, it is God placed you there so that he can develop you for the next best thing. The plumb line is we need to always go back to the truth of God's word. When the plumb line's been set, you've said yes, let your yes be yes, your no be no. So now you're there. How can you build something beautiful out of it? And how can you leave that place better than you found it? And that's where creativity comes in because sometimes we have to be really creative about finding things we like about our boss or finding <laughs> things we like about the tasks we do. So true. Um, but I think it's really important to realize that no matter what season we are in, there is purpose in it. And so we can derive a lot of peace and comfort from that. And it can help us with the perseverance it takes to move through where we're at and be faithful there. Because we have to be faithful with the small things before we can grow into something new. And, and who knows, the place that you may be growing into is a job position in that place. 
in where you're at that isn't even created yet. And you may be the one that helps develop that by your faithfulness where you are right now in that season. Oh, so good. I just am so encouraged by this message. And I know that you have put together three tips for us on how we can really apply this to bloom right where we're planted in a creative way and a very practical way, which I love that you've done that because we are all about the practical here on this show. So let's talk about step number one, which you say is really all about honesty, right? Right. So the name of my company is Constantly Creative LLC. So I always use the word constantly. Forgive me if I overuse it and you just want to shut off the podcast at this point because (laughs) it's one of my my favorite words because I think that when we tap into the fact that our purpose and design doesn't change just because of our circumstance, then we can be more consistent in our life. So yes, I believe in being constantly honest. I think we have to honestly assess our skills assess our resources, our time. And we need to figure out how to uh, create a space wherever we are, whether that's you know in our job as a nurse or in our job as a teacher or in our job as a business owner. We have to figure out a way to create value that serves other people. That's, I think, a big piece that we sometimes miss is when we're looking at our career and what we do, sometimes we kind of look right back at ourselves and what is it giving us. But I like that focus shift of how can you provide value to other people? Well, I mean, it's biblical. I mean, when the the Pharisee came to Jesus and he said, hey, you know, what is the greatest commandment? He said, love God with all your heart, strength, mind, and then to love others as yourself. And that means in our careers too. We cannot just think that it is a means to an end. Our career isn't just something that funds our tithe check and our grocery bill. It is something that serves people with the majority of our focus for the day. You know, in Jewish custom, you have eight hours of work, eight hours with family, and eight hours of sleep. And with that rhythm in our day-to-day life, We are at work eight to 10 hours a day. Now, some of us are privileged to work a much different schedule that's much more relaxed, but there is a season of work. And when you are there, you should be fully there, you know, with a hundred percent of your focus, doing it as unto the Lord. And if you're doing it as unto the Lord, he doesn't care about your, whether or not it makes you happy as much as whether or not you're touching the people around you and bringing him glory and making sure that other people feel his love. Now, that doesn't mean going around talking about the gospel all the time. But, you know, when you're loving people right where they are and serving them to the best of your ability in whatever field you're in, that's when you have, pardon the word, a magical moment with someone and they notice, hey, there's something different about you. And that may open up an opportunity to talk about the gospel in your work. But Regardless, you know, your actions speak volumes and loving people right where they're at and loving your neighbor as yourself, I think is an extremely important thing that we look at honestly every day. Am I doing the best that I can? So I think that's so important. Now, a question I have for you is when we're talking about this section and and really this concept, why the word honestly. Do you feel like sometimes when we're thinking about our career and what's available, like we can either get like the pendulum swings too far in one direction or another where it's like, I have nothing, this is horrible, or it swings to the other way where we're really just kind of disillusioned to what is the reality of the situation? Absolutely. I think that there are several, there's probably a minimum of two parties in this when we look at it. And sometimes Some of us can vacillate back and forth between these two, and there may be some shades of gray here. But you're either in the party where, like, I can't do that job. That's bigger than me. I don't have the skills that it takes. I don't have the whatever it takes. I'm not charismatic enough. I'm not this enough. I'm not that enough, or I'm too this. And we discredit what we can actually bring to the table. You know, the gifts of God are without repentance, and and the things that He's put on the inside of you. Those are there and they're there for a reason. And so, you know, to say that, oh, well, I'm not enough, you know, just for the career point of view, you know, the Lord has developed you and, and put things in you and you've gone to school or you've learned on your own how to do this. You are an expert in something. Give yourself honest credit. Now, 
don't swing to the other side, which is, I'm an absolute expert and no one can tell me what to do. Um, <laughs> because, you know, we are constantly learning. If you are unteachable, you are never going to move on from the position that you have. If you are unteachable, you're never going to get that promotion. So you have to stay honest with yourself. If there's a gap between where you are and where you want to be, honestly assess it. What will it take? to fill that gap? It, will it be more education? Is it more mentoring that you need from someone? Is it a, a change in attitude? Whatever it is, you have to honestly assess it. We cannot be grasshoppers in our own sight, you know, and we certainly can't be the king, the emperor with new clothes and walk in and we're really naked and we don't have enough. You know, so I think looking at our resources is extremely important. Sometimes that takes mindset work. I don't think that that ever really ends in life. You're constantly having to talk to yourself and say, you know, hey, this new challenge is here. I have a a new job or I have a new coworker I don't get along with. This is a new challenge. This is something that's impeding my mental and emotional health. And like, I need to figure out a way to change the way I look at it so it can be healthy so that I can grow in this place. I think that that is so important. And as you were talking, my brain just started flooding with (laughs) questions and examples and things that I, I think that we should dive into a little bit more. I mean, one of the things that I think is important when we're looking at the thought work and kind of our mindset work around different things that might be holding us back or not allowing us to bring our best self forward to work I know for myself in the past, I had a coworker who just triggered the worst in me. Like there was just Mm. something about their personality that I was never proud of the feelings that I felt on the inside whenever I had to work with them. And it was not who I wanted to be, but I really had to sit and think like, what is it about this person? And why am I allowing that trigger to happen for me that's making me not be the way that I want to be? I mean, I'm all about living with intention. But you know, sometimes there are things that happen to us externally that just change all of that for us. And I think that that's important to really talk about and think about when we're looking at our career and the way that we can work with our mindset. So if someone's in a situation like that, or the other situation I was thinking of was recently in our Facebook community, someone had mentioned that they wanted to apply for this promotion, but like, is it biblical to want to grow and want more out of your career versus being content where you are. And so, you know, there was some mindset work that she needed to kind of process through for that. So if we're kind of faced with this, where we know we need to dive into something, we need to explore something and our thoughts and our beliefs around different limiting beliefs or different thoughts, things that are holding us back. What's that process that you would recommend to kind of start doing that mind work? I know mind work and mindset, those are kind of like almost becoming buzzwords in our culture nowadays. Right. I don't think we people really can grasp what the true meaning is. Well, okay. So as believers, we're told to take every thought captive, right? And every vain imagination, you know, we need to make sure that we're managing it. Now, God gave us an imagination that's part of our creativity. You know, He gave us the ability to kind of dream and to think larger. And, you know, one of the misuses of our Im- imagination is worry and fear. And when we process on those things, you know, it creates mindsets that bring in doubt. And we know that as believers, that's not where we're supposed to be. So when we find ourselves thinking more about the fear aspects or the worry or not knowing about what best next steps, then we know, okay, we have some heart and mind issues that we need to take care of. I love to write down what could happen what the best case scenario is. And sometimes in order to write the best case scenario, maybe we need to write like a pros and cons list of what the worst case scenario is. Get it out of the way and go, okay, now I'm not going to think about that. Let's think about the best case scenario. You know, because we serve an infinite God with unlimited resources, imagination, and creativity. You know, He will partner with you to do above, beyond all you can ask or think. So when we're working on mindset issues, I think it's a really important to constantly be honest with yourself. What am I afraid of? Okay, what does the word say about fear? How can I help myself be more faith-filled in this area? And sometimes it's just as easy as like say in that instance when you're talking about that person you didn't get along with. I mean, Jesus did three years of ministry with a guy he knew was going to betray him. (laughs) 
<laughs> Truth. Yes. So, I mean, we, if he can endure it, we can endure it. Okay. And there's nothing that is going on externally that has more value than that person's life. And whether they are a believer or not, they are valuable to the Lord. And so they must be valuable to us. And if we go back to the heart of that, then it becomes much easier to love them where they're at. That doesn't necessarily mean we change our standards or we say, hey, you can't get away, you know, you can't get away with treating someone ugly or you can't get away with doing a poor job, but we can come alongside them and ask the Lord for the wisdom on how to deal with that. As far as the other example you gave about territory, and that's really what that issue is. Do I have the right or the permission biblically to ask for a promotion? God is a God of inheritance and territory. And he gives us all authority to walk in that. And that's the beauty of the grace and relationship that we have inside of Jesus. So if we are looking for promotion, know it's less about the money and more about the responsibility and the call that God is asking us to walk into more. You know, we have people roaming a desert for 40 years who had absolutely nothing except what he gave them. And then one day he said, okay, now we're going to assign land and you're going to have to take this land. You're going to have to occupy it and you're going to have to turn it into something. And if we have that mindset, when we walk into our career, whether it's at the nurse's duty station or whether it is in a classroom, or whether that is in corporate America, whether it's in ministry, wherever it is, if you're an entrepreneur, if you have that mindset that this is what the Lord has given me, this is the season I'm in, I'm going to grow it to the best of my ability. I was just reading Jordan Rayner. I don't know if you know him. No. He wrote a book that changed my life. It's called Called to Create. And he just came out with a book called Master of One. I highly recommend him. He also has another podcast that he talks all about uh, entrepreneurship. And he was saying that the parable of the sower is actually a great model for us to follow in our careers. If we are sowing some seed and it gets burned up really quick, it lands on some rocks and it doesn't, you know, we know not to focus our energy there. If we sow some seeds in our career and it starts to sprout up, but then, you know, roots come up and it chokes it, we know not to sow our seed there. It's when we find good soil and we're sowing seed there and we're growing and we're doing what we can and things and we're starting to yield fruit, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. That's when we know we've gotten into the zone of our career and our mindset is working. Some of the things that come and choke up the, the seed that we're sowing in our careers is our mindset. And that's why it's so important to take every thought captive and examine what we're saying to ourselves. What are we saying about ourselves? What story are we telling ourselves? And does it line up to who God says we are? Does it line up to who we know God to be? Because if it makes God out to be anything less than the most awesome being in the universe who can still create with his words today, just with a whisper to our heart, change everything, then we have mindset work to do and heart work to do. And it can change everything. That's amazing. And of course, being constantly honest (laughs) and all of those questions and seeking everything. And I just think that that's incredible. Now, so when we're doing this and we're being the best that we can be, and we're really seeking truth and following God and what he would have for us in our career and how we can really look at more of the eternal versus what's going on in front of us. Talk to me a little bit about how we can maybe adjust because I feel like you know, sometimes we can be really honest with things, but then where do we go from there? Like, how do we, how do we move forward with that? Hey there, I hope you're enjoying this series all about helping you grow in your career. Did you know that inside Life Balance membership, we have a whole resources section just to this? Yep. And there you can find things like how to pray for your boss, creating standard operating practices, aka routines, to help you with your quarterly, monthly, weekly, and daily planning in your career, and a bonus course all about helping you grow in your leadership. Now, the cool thing with this course is it's an audio course. You can just listen to it while you work, while you drive, or while you wind down. And of course, this is in addition to the member-only podcast, all of the courses, the planning tools, and so much more waiting for you inside Life Balance Membership. 
you can start a free seven day trial by going to lifebalancemembership.com or upgrading right inside the Your Life Rocks mobile app. All right, now let's get back to the episode. Talk to me a little bit about how we can maybe adjust because I feel like, you know, sometimes we can be really honest with things, but then where do we go from there? Like, how do we, how do we move forward with that? Right. So when we've made an honest assessment, we find something lacking, you know, now we need an adjustment. We need a gear change. We need a shifting. You know, we need something that puts us back on the path to what God has called us to and what we know in our career that we want to achieve. And that means adjusting. I, I always say that flexibility is the 13th fruit of the spirit. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you, you have to be flexible. And I learned that while I was a missionary. That, you know, I would lead teams of youth or family mission trips for an organization that I worked for for a while. And one of the things that I would always tell people is flexibility is the 13th fruit of the spirit. You have to be flexible on a mission trip. And then I realized that that phrase, flexibility, it just really applies to everything. You have to be willing to change things on the go. I think it's important to find out what the next right thing is and do that. So many times we're like looking five years down the road or six months down the road or even six days down the road. Sometimes we don't have the ability to have that kind of foresight. We just have to know, I have options in front of me. These are my options. What is the next right thing? And do that. And stop overanalyzing every little thing and just trust that God's given you enough wisdom to handle what's in front of you. That's a good word. Now, one thing I want to ask you about this with the adjusting, because I'm a natural Mm -hmm. planner, and I think a lot of my audience are also planners. Uh, We like to Mm -hmm. plan ahead. We like to know what's certain. But I do think that there's a big component of this. I know in my own experience, you know, you can create a plan, but then you have like a prompting of the Holy Spirit that will move you in a completely different direction. And sometimes that's hard to, you know, really discern and know if it's Him. And then you can get kind of caught in this like, should I stay to my plan or should I adjust? Or like, what does that look like? So talk to us a little bit if we're someone's listening and they're kind of like, I have this plan. I want to bloom where I'm planted. I feel like this is where I need to be. But then there's this new opportunity or there's this new whatever it is. Should they be flexible or how do they know if that is really an adjustment of the Lord or just a happenstance thing that's happening in the world? Well, I I think that there are a couple of things that work here. First, we have to know that, you know, we have to remember that Psalm says that we can look to the right or to the left, no matter which direction we take there, the Lord is with us. So that takes a lot of the pressure off, right? I think the big thing that I have learned is to fail fast. If I'm going to try something out, if I'm going to incorporate a new habit or a new, try a new system at work, or if I'm going to change my schedule, or if I'm going to, you know, if you're an entrepreneur and you're going to bring, try to bring a new product to the world, I think that it's important that we go with the minimum viable product model and we fail fast. And, and that's not even like, I, I know that sounds very businessy. And for those of you who are not like running your own business, you're like glazed over at this point and saying that doesn't apply to me, but it really does. Because we are too often people who assign failure as identity. And failure is not identity. Failure is an event that happens and it's a learning experience. We don't have to look at failure as something that is puts a pen in our life and says we're done. We have to look at failure as a like a scientist does. Okay, that in the in this experiment we had a failing, it didn't work. Let's see how we can adjust. I think it's extremely important that we don't invest too much time, effort, or emotional energy into something that isn't working because that just cripples us. We'll fail every time if we over-invest too much time. But when we learn from our failures, then we can move on to either the next try or just say, okay, that idea seems to have fallen flat. It was a great idea, but you know, we're moving on. We'll take what we learned from it and apply it to whatever happens next. The best advice I ever got was from Jeff Goins, who is a writer and author. And he looked right at me after I had explained how horribly I had failed at something. And he was like, wow, yeah, that really stank. And you, you failed. So what are you going to do about it? You can sit here in it or you can get up and fail forward. 
You can take what you learned and m- use that as the motivation to never fail in that way again. And I think that that helps us get unstuck. I think it helps us to constantly adjust. I think that it helps us to be flexible. And I think it takes the pressure off of getting every single thing right. When did we buy into the lie that everything has to work perfectly? Totally. And you know, I think that this really, I'm going to bring it back to our overarching message of this, of this particular episode, which is blooming where you're planted, because I can imagine someone listening to this and, you know, kind of going back to being constantly honest with ourselves and and thinking about the way that they've been showing up in their career, or maybe not always being the best foot forward or or doing the job that they would want to do, but being able to adjust and kind of flip the switch and say, okay, as of today, I'm going to like do something different. I remember one time I had, um, I was at a conference for the company that I worked for and the CEO was giving this, this speech and it was a really rough year for the company. And she said that she decided she could carry all of that baggage of all of the negativity of everything that happened in the previous year into the next year, or she could choose to have a fresh start. And she said, you know what? I decided I was going to fire myself on Friday and rehire myself (laughs) on Monday. And when she's rehired herself on Monday, it was for a new job and a new company mentally. Obviously, it was still the same position in the same company. And But she chose to do something different to adjust her attitude and adjust her mindset and adjust her actions to get a different result. And I just thought that that was so powerful because some of us, we might be, you know, having that honest reflection moment and looking back and being like, gosh, yeah, I kind of messed that up. But that doesn't mean you have to throw it all away and find a new job and, you know, move on. You could just choose to adjust the way that you have been performing or your attitude or your mindset and do something different. You know, Jenny, yesterday, I was, I, I mean, this is something that I do all the time. I'm not perfect. I'm sitting here talking about something, but just a few days ago that, you know, that I love, that I believe in blooming where you're planted and being creative. <laughs> but just a few days ago, I felt like a complete fraud. I was having some mindset issues. I was having a lot of fear. I was having a lot of panic about um, taxes and who my, where my next client was going to come from and whether or not I was even supposed to be doing this, you know, it would be so much easier if I just went and got a corporate job, then I wouldn't have all these pressures. And, you know, I realized, you know, something was wrong and I was very honest with myself, but I had to like be accountable out loud to somebody. So I sat my husband down who is not, you know, an entrepreneur, but he's so supportive. And I just said, okay, I'm not doing well. Here are all the things that are going on with me. Can you pray for me? He prayed for me. I was like, okay, I'm going to bed. And I'll know what I'm supposed to do tomorrow. And as I was drifting off to sleep, I really felt like tomorrow I was not supposed to work. I was supposed to get up, go to a local park, just get out in nature, walk around and just be in the moment. And so that's what I did the next day. I I got up and I went and had some time by myself. And while I was walking through this park, I saw this little tiny sprout coming up out of a dead tree. and. I just looked at it and kind of laughed to myself because there is a visual representation of blooming where you're planted, Mm. blooming right where you are. You know, it may feel really dead around you. It may feel like you've been a complete failure. It may feel like you have absolutely no resources, but you can still bloom right where you are. And, you know, that's being honest and constantly adjusting. And, you know, do I still have any idea where my next client is coming from now, but I have a piece about it because I know that the Lord's the one that brings increase. Like we have to understand that if we do everything as unto the Lord, we can do the best work ever. We can be the most genius at our job ever. We can be the one that's the rock star and be completely rocking every part of our life. But God is the one who gives the increase. And yeah. and that takes the pressure off. Totally does. It totally does. And it's a whole different way of living versus thinking that you need to do it all on your own strength and you need to rely on your own creativity and your own planning and your own actions and all of these other things when you can just surrender that to him and say, okay, God, I'm just going to let you use me right here, right where I'm at. You brought me to this place. What do you want me to do with it? And be open right. to that. And I think that that does take honesty and it takes being flexible. 
but it also does require you to have some action in that. And I think that this is a good transition to your third point in helping people bloom where they're planted in their career is being constantly creative. Yeah, I think creative solutions, you know, are more at your disposal than you think. I think sometimes we get so busy doing the day to day that we forget to dream about what we want to do, what we feel called to do. You know, I recently read about a a study that says that the people who find the most job satisfaction are not the ones who start off their careers in a dream job. It's the ones who are the most faithful in a job and do it to the best of their ability for a long period of time. Then they find job satisfaction. So how are they staying in a place where maybe it started off feeling very dead end? They're doing it creatively. They're coming in and dreaming about what the process of doing their job could look like. They're looking for underlying issues or problems with fresh eyes. And they're seeing things that they can fix. You know, creativity is problem solving. And if the smoke from the smallest thing is like, I don't like my desk, I don't like the way my workflow works, then change what you can change on your desk. Be creative about it. You know, you don't have to be stuck. Yes, there are some things that you have to be mindful of in a, in a space that belongs to another corporation, but you have a small amount of territory that you can be very creative about. And when you start to, to problem solve, then it makes it easier. I always tell people that we need to, when there's a problem, when there's an issue, and we need to be creative about, about things, it's easier if we look at things from 10,000 feet rather than being in the trenches, because this is yes. where we get lost is in the trenches. If you think of World War I, the warfare was all done in between from one trench to another, and people would just get stuck for months and months and months living in a trench, and no progress would happen on either side. It isn't until we get up and get a better view of things. And you know you can't do that at 30,000 feet. That's too high. You can't see the details, but if you fly at 10,000 feet about eagle height, you get a really nice lay of the land and you can see, you know, here are some changes. Here's a pathway I can take. This is the way I can be creative in this moment. And, you know, I think it's important to work small and dream big. I once heard one of my online mentors, Natalie Ekdahl, she's a business coach and podcaster. She said, you know, when you make decisions, we need a standard. Will you? Will your work matter in five minutes, five months, or five years? We need goals. We need short, mid, and long-term goals. And each step feeds the other. You know, And we make goals. That's creative thinking. If you sit there and think, I'm not a creative person, then you probably struggle with making goals. But when you realize that you are a creative person, goal setting becomes easier. And I love that you're mentioning it this way because you know when I think about the word creative, I think about the arts, kind of like what we, you know, kind of bringing it right back to what we had talked about at the very beginning is I never consider myself to be a super creative person. But when you kind of start to talk about being creative by solving problems, by setting goals, I mean, I'm a a huge goal setter. (laughs) I love setting goals. I love planning. I love solving problems. And to think about that from the lens of being creative and thinking of all the ways that you could be creative and solving problems, solving your problems, solving others' problems, to really help you bloom. And I don't know about you, and and I'm sure the listeners can kind of relate to this as well. But when I do come up with something that's creative and it works and I feel better, or maybe I get praise for it, like it changes everything. It can make it into like one of the best days ever. And I think that that is something that we should be focusing on as well when we're talking about blooming where we're planted. Because sometimes when we're setting goals, it's like if it's an internal goal and I hit the goal, I don't always celebrate it. But when it's a goal that I've set or it's a creative use of my energy at work and it benefits other people and they recognize that, then that that can be huge. Yeah. I think that one of the things that we can think about when we think about being creative, you know, I said in the beginning that we're made in the image of God. You know, he's the most creative being inside and outside of the universe. And he took nothing and made something out of it. He took chaos and made something out of it. And then here's the key. He didn't call it perfect. He called it good. And I think that sometimes we're afraid to create or to approach something creatively 
because we're afraid it won't be perfect. And when we realize that the standard that the Lord has for us is good, then we can learn in the creative process of how to constantly get better. So our scale of good will increase, but stop striving for perfection. (laughs) Only God himself is perfect. And all the other things outside of God, he just calls good. That's good. That's good. (laughs) That is a good (laughs) word right there. Now, before we let you go, I want to ask you one final question. So if someone's listening Mm -hmm. to this and they're thinking, okay, I thought I needed to switch jobs or maybe they've just, maybe they weren't even thinking about switching jobs, but they just kind of felt stagnant where they were at. What Mm -hmm. final advice would you have for them to help them bloom right where they are? I think you need to remember that each step feeds the other. You know, God doesn't waste anything. Every task, every contract, every client, every product, everything matters. And if you do your very best at every step and you don't faint at the small things, if you're faithful in them, if you do all of those things, you will bloom right where you are. So beautiful. I love it. I love it. Well, if people want to learn more about you, Dana, or they want to get connected with you, what's the best way for them to do that? Well, my website is theconstantcreativellc.com, or you could look me up on Facebook or Instagram under my name, Dana Bickham, D-A-Y-N-A, B as in boy, I-C-K-H-A-M. I am all over there constantly. (laughs) There's that word again, because I, I am just a very visual person. I love Instagram. I love telling stories there. Got some really cool projects coming up. But if you'd like to work with me or to uh, learn more about me, my website is definitely the place to go. And that's where you can get my books and that kind of thing. Fantastic. And we will make sure we link to that on the show notes and the show description and the podcast players as well. So people can connect with you. And even, you know, I would just encourage everyone to reach out to Dana and just let her know if this episode touched you in any way and if it inspired you to bloom right where you're planted. Dana, thank you so much for coming on the show. It was such a joy to talk with you and to learn from you. And I just pray that God would bless you and everything that you're doing to bless other people and bring your talents creatively into the world. Thank you so much, Jenny. And there you go. I hope that this interview with Dana blesses you. And if you need to decide to bloom where you're planted, I hope that the steps that she shared are things that you can start to put into play right away, right where you are. Now, next week, I'll have a guest on and we're gonna be talking about what it might look like if you need to move jobs, if you're looking for something different. And even if you do decide to stay where you're planted or you absolutely love where you are, I hope that you don't miss next week's episode because we're also gonna be talking about things that you can do while you are right where you're at to set you up for success for in the future if you ever do need to move on to something else. So make sure that you hit subscribe so you don't miss any of the upcoming episodes that we have in this series. And if you're looking to take your leadership to the next level, I highly encourage that you upgrade to Life Balance Membership inside the Your Life Rocks app or go to lifebalancemembership.com so that you can get that included audio training. Until next week, keep building a life that rocks. Bye. Hey, just because the episode's over doesn't mean we have to stop hanging out. Head on over to Instagram and follow me there. You can find me at your.life.rocks. Or if you're more of a Facebook kind of girl, join our community of working Christian moms just like you. You can search Your Life Rocks over on Facebook and connect with us there. And if you're ready to truly create lasting balance and get results in your life, maybe it's time for you to join Life Balance Membership. Download the Your Life Rocks app in iTunes or in Google Play. You can upgrade to the membership right inside the app. And if you're looking for more resources to help you create more balance, head on over to yourliferocks.com.